Hello everybody, my name is Jeff Bees and I am one of the TAs for the Fall 2019 ME4031W course. I am here to talk to you today about some information that you will need to um, prepare for the Lab 1A Learning Lab View exercise. Some things that we'll be talking about involve uh, an overview of the setup, zeroing procedure for the op amp, and then the goals and validation for the program that you will write. So here is a picture of the actual uh, setup. For clarity, we're going to convert this over to an electronic schematic. We see here is this, the whole experimental setup, broken up into three different sections given by color blue being the temperature region, um, connected to the uh, amplification region given by red, and then the data acquisition region given by purple. I will actually talk about each of these sections individually, but remember that they are connected to the whole. So for temperature measurement, we have a K-type thermocouple, um, which the K-type refers to the two different metal wires that are associated with the thermocouple. On one end of the thermocouple, these wires are joined together um, by twisting, and so that acts as a probe which you place within your probe environment, in our case air. And on the other end, these wires are not connected to each other, but rather to copper lead wires um, with the positive copper lead wire connecting to the yellow chromal wire and the negative copper lead wire connected to the red illumal wire. Again, these wires lead off to the op amp, um, which I'll talk about later. The connection between these um, wires here uh, actually is placed within the ice bath to provide a reference uh, temperature. Uh, some notes about the thermocouple is that the operating range is between negative 200 degrees Celsius and 1350 degrees Celsius, which is outside any temperatures we will experience in the lab, which makes it ideal for our lab, and which is why we use it quite frequently in um, this course. One of the downsides to the thermocouple, though, is that the sensitivity is really small, um, generating only 41 microvolts for every one degree Celsius that is measured by the thermocouple. What this means is that since this signal is much smaller than the resolution, as I'll talk about later, um, we actually need to amplify it in order for the data acquisition unit, or the DAC, to actually be able to read um, these signals. The ice bath uh, provides a zero degree reference temperature, which is important because it doesn't know what temperature it's reading. It can only read a reference point. So the temperature it tells you is based on the subtraction of the probe environment and the reference point. So if there is no reference being used and both are in ambient temperature, the ambient temperature will be subtracted by the reference ambient temperature giving a zero degree reading. Now for the ice bath, if you need to refill it, um, the ice can be found on the fourth floor hallway leading to Ackerman Hall. Uh, the water uh, can be um, retrieved from the sink in the lab. Make sure that there is ice in the ice bath while you're doing the experiment because we need to ensure that zero degree reference point. Another thing to keep in mind with the ice bath is that if you touch the wires to the outer metal shell, it will actually create a short circuit and lead to highly erroneous readings, uh, such as like negative 5,000 degrees um, Celsius, which we certainly will not be even feasibly able to experience. So these wires will actually lead into this op amp, uh, which is a 100 times differential op amp, or operational amplifier. Uh, which means that it multiplies the signal coming in from the left to 100 times greater value and outputs it to these two terminals to the right. In order to create that 100 times amplification, we need to include this power supply in order to generate that voltage, because uh, unfortunately we haven't invented magic yet. Once you have this signal, something to keep in mind is that um, the op amp actually has a um, zero point offset. So even when you should be reading zero volts, um, it will not give you that zero volts until you use the potentiometer knob up to the top right of the op amp 
um, to uh, zero it. Now the multimeter that you'll be using to read the um, zero voltage from the op amp um, should be set to uh, DC voltage in the millivolt range. Um, your zeroing will not get precisely to zero volts. Um, there will always be random fluctuations, um, but you should be able to get within about plus or minus um, 50 microvolts. Um, be sure to include a warm-up period of at least 15 minutes in order to make your multimeter as accurate as it can be. Now on the uh, data acquisition end, um, you'll be interfacing the DAC with LabVIEW through a USB wire. And on the software end, you'll be using the DAC assistant to acquire an analog voltage. And make sure that it is set to AIO, which just references the channel that the DAC is um, bringing the information through. And since we're dealing with a, a small differential voltage provided by the thermocouple, we want to set the range to its minimum value of plus or minus one volt and make sure it is on the differential setting. The DAC itself has a resolution of 14 bits, um, which for your reference, um, given the plus or minus one volt differential, corresponds to 0.12 millivolts as the minimum voltage that can be read. Um, given the sensitivity of roughly 41 microvolts per degree Celsius, this means that the minimum temperature that can be read by the DAC without amplification is three degrees. Hence why we need that amplification. Now, um, as far as the physical connection for the DAC, make sure it is also connected to the AIO channel in the plus or minus ports that we can see over here um, below ground, AIO plus, AIO negative. Now we're going to talk about the zeroing procedure. Um, so it's actually pretty simple. We have uh, the subsection of the full schematic here because the other parts are not needed for this procedure. Um, what we do have is a power supply plugged into the op amp, a single wire leading between the positive and negative terminals of the input to the op amp, and then the positive and negative output terminals being connected to the input and positive and negative um, terminals for the multimeter. Once that is all set up, you want to adjust the potentiometer knob until the multimeter reads as close to zero volts as possible. Last piece I'm going to talk about is uh, what you need to accomplish with your program. And so in order to do that, I'm actually going to open up um, the LabVIEW program. Um, so if you program this properly, um, you should see a front panel that looks similar to this. And um, here we see uh, to the right of the graph, we've got some probe values. Um, this graph will have temperature, an average temperature value updated with time continuously. Uh, and then we will output the file um, based upon where you choose. In this case, I'm going to choose this file out. Um, you want to have a file path plus a file name followed by .csv. Once so you've got those settings um, in, press run. And you should see uh, temperature roughly in the ambient re range. And then we'll place the probe into the ice bath and watch as it drops down to zero degrees Celsius. Once you've verified that, you can stop the program and then open up the file that you saved it to to make sure that it has successfully outputted time, average, and standard deviation of temperature, as well as the average and standard deviation of your voltage. Once you've verified that with your TA, you're welcome to submit the .vi file to Canvas, and then you're all done. Thank you for watching this video, and I hope you found this helpful.